Welcome to Maker Camp. Today we're going to journey behind the banana piano. We're going to meet the makers behind the Makey Makey and find out what it takes to bring this fun, programmable, interactive toy to everyone and makes it so that you can be an inventor. We're also going to be having just the best time with seeing what you campers have been making with the Makey Makey and find out what it takes to take the Makey Makey to a whole new level. Plus, we're going to be checking out today's project, Sketch It, Play It. So let's get ready to Makey something Grady. Thank you for joining us. I'm Camp Director Paloma, and it seems that Camp Director Sam is out wrestling bears. More on that later. Now, campers, if you have any questions throughout the show, you can leave those in the comments bar, and we'll get to them later. And if you're an affiliate who wants to join us live in the future, you can go to the affiliate information page and fill out the form. Now, we have an affiliate with us today who did just that. I would love to welcome on the Hootie Maker Camp. Hello, everybody. Hi. Welcome to Maker Camp. I'm so excited to have all of you. So everyone there, I would love for you to tell me what is your name and what is one thing that you are currently making? Okay, I'm Reagan. Well, one thing you're uh, making now. Um, what I'm making now is a electric bike design. Great. I'm Carson and I'm currently not making <laughs> Where everyone will remember Carson from his purple paper reader, which I still have upstairs. I love that. Yeah, actual making table. We're making a table that we're gonna set up and have trash in there. Very awesome. Hey, uh, she draws. So say that. Okay. Uh, the rest of it I draw. Awesome. I love uh, drawing. Is one of my favorite pastimes. I'm Jaden. I'm currently thinking about a smart wristband. That's fantastic. I am so excited to see everything that you're making. And so hopefully all of you are posting pictures on the G Plus community page, and I'm very happy to see them. Now, I see that you have something in front of you. It looks like a Makey Makey, which is very fitting with today's, uh, today's guests. Can you tell us what that is? Uh, well, what we're doing is we're doing a little project where we're going to be, we call it nose piano. So it's, we're going to be tapping each other's noses at, in your theme song of the piano. That's awesome. Can we see a demonstration? Sure. I love it. You are just so awesome. I love all of you. Thank you so much for sharing that. And you know what? All of you, please stay with us for the rest of the show because I know that you've got some awesome questions for our guests. And you know what? The cameras might have some great questions for you because you all are so impressive. So thank you for sticking around. And next, I want to bring on our guests. We have Eric Rosenbaum and Bo and Rachel Silver from Makey Makey. And we also have Kelly Snook, who is a sound technologist. So thank all of you for joining us. We're so happy to have you. Hi. Hello. OK. So I really want to start with Eric and Bo. And can you tell us what is a Makey Makey and what is the basic setup that I need to get started? Sure. Um, so I'm Eric, co-inventor with Jay Silver of the Makey Makey Invention Kit, and I'm um, here in front of a desk with a little Makey Makey setup. So hopefully you can see that. That is the Makey Makey circuit board. It's it pretends that it's a keyboard when you plug it into the computer, so you can make your own keys out of anything. We just saw some keys made out of noses, but I'll kind of walk you through how that works. It uses these alligator clips and you just plug them right into the board and then use them to complete a circuit. So this one is connected to ground and then I connect that to the other one which is connected to space and then it can make a sound. It's just the same as though to the computer, it's the same as though I pressed the, the regular space bar. But instead, for example, I could um, you know, grab my office mate uh, Tiffany who's sitting over there. I'm using her desk. Thanks, Tiffany. Everybody Hi. here's Tiffany. Hi. Um, okay. Thanks, Tiffany. Let's grab the middle end of that clip and now Hey, okay. So we can do a human synthesizer, high five, symbol crash, one more time. All right. 
Encore. Okay, thank you, Tiffany. <laughs> that's great. It looks awesome. And, you know, thank you so much for sharing that. So uh, that's a really great way to get, get started with the Makey Makey. But I know our counselors have some pictures and video of what you campers have been doing with the Makey Makey. So counselors, why don't you show us some of that sound? Hey everyone, I'm Camp Counselor Sandra. And I'm Counselor Pierre, and I will uh, show you what you've been uh, making. Um, so first, uh, eight makers friends are demonstrating the duck treat piano. Piano. <laughs> Good dog. Which is very, very funny. That's <laughs> so cute. You see a duck playing music? I wonder if he knows that's him. Yeah. yeah. Good dog! Uh, and uh, here is uh, Maker Camp San Leandro's uh, veggie piano. Goes very well. And, that sounds uh, um, great. Our city clubhouse is using Makey Makey as a game controller using Scratch that allows um, this maker to play video games uh, from his wheelchair. Yeah, so just like just like you were talking about, you can key this up with your computer, and this maker has used the the Makey Makey to allow them to press the button to be able to play this game. That's a great use of the Makey Makey. I love it. That's wonderful. Yeah, thank you so much, counselors, for sharing that. And, and Eric, uh, you have talked with us uh, today. You brought along a project that we're going to hear more about later in the show called Sketch It, Play It. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So the Makey Makey lets you complete a circuit through anything electrically conductive. So far, we've seen noses and high fives and, uh, what well, like a dog and some plants. It works with drawings on paper, too. So Sketch It, Play It is about making musical instruments out of drawings on paper. It's really fun. Awesome. So let's check out a video of that. <laughs> When I was making this, I actually placed my head on the paper and made little marks, just making sure I had each head in exactly the right place. That sounds great. I can't wait to hear more about that from our counselors. And, and Bo, I know that you've got an interesting use for, for the Makey Makey as well. Can you tell us a little bit about that? We hooked up plants. <laughs> One cool thing I really like about the plants is that they're literally living beings, so it kind of uh, shows how there's energy running through all living things when you complete the circuit. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, that looks, and it sounds so beautiful. I love that. And you can just, you know, program it exactly. <laughs> the other cool thing is that when you hook it up to stuff in a room that um, might normally just be sitting on the wall, people, uh, it, it's like blending into the world. So you don't expect a plant to make a sound. Yeah, I, that's awesome. I bet that you could just totally have so much fun with that, just hiding it in an office space and not telling anybody that that's what it is. And they're like, oh, can you grab that thing? It's just right behind the plant. And then they freak out. I'm not condoning that, campers, at all. <laughs> And those choice of sounds in his programming make it really beautiful, too, I think. Yeah, yeah, so you can just program whatever kind of sounds you want to go with the, the application, right? The original idea was um, plant chimes, because if you imagine wind going, wind making leaves rustle like this, it was cool to think about, about chimes in that way. And I think when we add beautiful <clears throat> sounds to natural things, um, it just gives like a sense of awe and wonder to the world, because plants are already beautiful. We love plants. They feel really beautiful to touch, and it's kind of amazing when they make beautiful sounds, yeah. Yeah, that really comes across. You get the, the kind of beautiful movement of them along with these really melodic and soft sounds. So that's, that's really great. Thank you so much for sharing that. I love that. And I think you have a video of, of that as well that we can roll. <laughs> And that's 
so calming. I just want to take a nap now. Like, oh, that's just, oh, yay. <laughs> I think the tech part is really cool with all this, but if you take the tech out and just look at the wonder and beauty of creation and art and music, um, it can be really magical, especially to non-tech people. Because, you know, you got all these wires hanging everywhere, and that's really great, too, but it's nice to just have a natural beauty with, uh, with the tech stuff kind of behind the scenes. Yeah, and I think that's my favorite thing about the Makey Makey is that it's just so, it allows you to really take on that step of making it, taking it a step further and giving you creativity, and you can use it in a bunch of really beautiful and interesting ways. And uh, also, I can, uh, Eric, I, th I know that you have a video that you wanted to show us about, about different ways that you can use the Makey Makey. It was really exciting for us to create the Makey Makey and put it out in the world. But the really amazingly mind-blowing thing is what happens when people hear back what they make. Since there are now Makey Makeys all over the world, people are posting every day on YouTube their crazy things that Jay and I maybe never even imagined when we put it out there. And so since it's so exciting to see all of these uh, musical inventions, say, um, I've been creating compilation videos. So I made one that's in two minutes. You see 17 different amazing uh, Makey Makey music inventions. And so here's a clip that just shows uh, a few of those. Those are so great. I love that. I'm definitely going to check out that video with 17 of them because I, I love that little drum set. That's so cool. They're crossing their fingers. So cool. Okay, awesome. Makey Makey is great. And you know what? I want to bring Kelly into the conversation now because, Kelly, you take Makey Makey and you've brought it up to a really advanced level. So can you talk to us about what you've done with Makey Makey and where you've taken that? Well, I first I started like everyone else with some flowers. Um, <laughs> I wanted to sing happy birthday to my sister, um, and so I made happy birthday on some flowers. Um, and then I, I started to see the power of it, actually. Rather than it just being something cute that I could play with, I saw how it was possible to use the Makey Makey to enhance the way I played the instruments that I already played. And so I, I was really interested in, I am really interested in looping either looping my voice or looping an instrument that I'm playing. And on the piano, it's actually quite hard to play and loop at the same time because you have to move your hand somewhere. So what I did on the piano is I put a little strip of copper under, right underneath the, the keyboard and then hooked that up to the Makey Makey and hooked that up to the looper button in Ableton Live so that I could actually um, very easily and, and um, smoothly loop uh, what I was playing on the piano, and, and so you could record and record over and record over what, what, what you're playing. And I think it, it was just such a, a simple project that allowed a, a whole new way of exploring how to play the piano, and I think that's really exciting. Yeah, that's, that's such a great and innovative use of the Makey Makey, and I think we're going to put a, p a video of that on the Google Plus page, so if you want to check out the, there's some more information about the looping piano, check that out. Like, and we learned about looping uh, earlier this week with Reggie Watts, so I think it's a, it's a great way for campers to see how they can kind of DIY loop in a really cool way. So exactly. after, after that piano, what did you move on to next? Well, um, we, um, I guess we were working on a, a really exciting project that um, kind of takes the idea of using everyday objects or unexpected objects to make music to a new level where we, we're using our hands as uh, and our arms as musical instruments. And we've been making, with Imogen Heap and a small team of, team of people, some of whom are in this room with me, and I can show that in a minute, but we're making musical gloves that sense what you're doing with your hand, whether you're bending your fingers or moving your wrist in, in, in all different directions, and it can sense accelerations. You, you, we, we, had, we wanted to devise a way that we could sense as, as much as possible about our, our gestures and then turn that into music. And so we, uh, we do have a little bit of, uh, of video footage of Imogen using these gloves, so maybe we could look at that now. Yeah, let's check out that video. Um. 
and I've got little hi hats with a little make little hi hats hi hat. And I think we've got another one here to talk yeah, about another. more. Yeah, let's let's take a take a look at that one too. In this one, in this one, she uh, she <laughs> thinks <laughs> moving <laughs> along the way for. Yeah, so tell us what we're going to be looking oh, at here. Sorry about that. Yeah, uh, there's a little bit of a delay, but she 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 has recorded her voice with a gesture, and then she's taking that recording and she's just moving, almost moving her hands across it, so you can hear different things about what she's just recorded, just what she's doing with her hands. It's moving along the waveform. This changes the speed of the grain. And that is the speed between the grains. And that's panning into the right. Going, go, 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 that's so beautiful. And campers, you may remember hearing about this project last year during DIY Music when we had Imogen Heap on. And so I'm so excited to see how far it's come and, and how much, like, just, just really get in depth about it because I'm a total nerd about the Gloves project. So, so can you talk with us a little bit about your contribution and who else you have with you in the room? Yes, I've just turned my camera around. Um, I'm, I'm one of the, one of the, software programmers on the team and I work a little bit with the hardware but this is Rachel Frere, um, wave your hand, <laughs> and Bex and they are working on actually sewing these uh, lovely gloves right now. We're making three new pairs today so you caught us on a good day. So what they're doing is, is sewing together the textiles that we will then insert the electronics into. So they're working on the the lovely, lovely textiles, and I am then taking these textiles and inserting things that are somewhat like the Makey Makey board. They take the data in from the gloves and then con convert it into information that the computer can do something with and that we can map to music, but we can also map it to other things like lights or visuals or, you know, really anything that you could imagine. Then we have a connection between the physical world and our computers or our music or our art and that's that's really very very exciting to us. I'm going to turn it around again so you can see a little bit more of, of the work they're doing <laughs> as well, we talk. Doing fantastic work. Those gloves are so beautifully designed and well put together but I think one of my favorite things about it is that I mean it is this well polished uh, final product but it's also open source and easy to use for whatever you want to do. So can you talk with us a little bit about why you decided to go open source? Yeah, I mean, actually to be, to be just to get technical about things, they're not open source yet because actually it's pretty difficult to get to the point where you can open source a project. So that's what we're working on right now. We had a Kickstarter, um, and I think we, we might have a link to that Kickstarter video, I'm not sure, but um, we, we had a Kickstarter that would help us get to the point where we could put all of the all of these um, textile designs and our electronics designs out into the world and our software. We have special software that takes all the data and, and converts that into allows a person to convert that into to music. So it's very exciting when other people start to take these things and make new things with them that we've never thought of, just like Eric was saying. And already they're doing that, um, even with the, the small amount of information we've been able to put out on the web. But we're hoping that by the end of this year or by spring of next year, we'll have all of the all the patterns and all of the designs and all of the software code online so people can hack away. That's that's so great, and I think it aligns really well with the Maker Camp community, the Maker community, and everything. It's allowing you to use this tool to be really creative and have this fantastically wonderful beautiful artistic and tech and all, all that creation together so I really want to thank you for the work that you've done and for bringing this this kind of like large vision of what you can do starting with a makey makey and, and how you can take that and really grow from it so thank you so much for sharing that with us and, and please do stay with us so that we can get some questions for you because I know that there are campers out there who remember the glove from last year and are so itching to learn more about it and that's not just me freaking out and being nerdy about it because I also love this project. <laughs> it's my pleasure. It's our pleasure to be here. Thank you for yeah, I'll be right. Thank you, everybody. And you guys are doing a fantastic job of sewing those gloves together. They look great. I've seen up close <laughs> pictures and they look fantastic. So, I, and I also I want to jump it back um, over to Eric because 
I know that uh, you want to talk with us a little bit about the kind of other things that you can do with the Makey Makey. Well, I'm really excited about using um, uh, the Makey Makey and things that go beyond it for music performance and other kinds of musical creation. Behind me, I've got a musical painting that I, collab I created in collaboration with another Media Lab student. Her name is Sophia Bruckner. Uh, and she does both visual art and music. And so we were able to create together this painting. Uh, it's an acrylic painting with conductive paint on the surface. And then, so each of these black areas triggers a different note. There's a nail right through the wooden panel to the back of it. Whoa, OK. And uh, on the back, you can see they're all wired up. And there are two makey makeys on the bottom of the painting. Those have been reprogrammed. So instead of the typical makey makey sensing, they use something called capacitance sensing. Before I talk about that more, I want to show you how it works. I accidentally rebooted it just now, so it's not working at this second. But we have a video of it that we can roll along with some other musical paintings. So let's go to that now. Great. <laughs> That's so beautiful. Really well done. Wow. So basically, we realized that we would need to use a different type of sensing from Makey Makey. So Makey Makey, normally, you have to ground yourself and then complete a circuit. One way to do it is by touching something. Um, Sophia and I were working on this painting to go in an art uh, exhibition. So it was going to go on a wall. And so we realized we wanted people to just be able to walk up to it and touch the painting. That's already kind of weird. And so asking them to ground themselves and touch the painting was too much. So we, we decided to go with this other type of sensing. It doesn't require you to be grounded. It can just detect that a human is touching it by measuring their capacitance. Um, and so we reprogrammed the Makey Makeys using some code we found on the Arduino website to do that. Great. That, that, looks, that looks so great. And, and it works so beautifully. So, and it, so I was wondering if you could talk to us just a little bit about like what, so you've got nails going through to the back and those are hooked up to the Makey Makey. Now those, you were touching like multiple at once, are there any issues that come along with that? Like did you have to overcome anything when you were developing this? Well, I was really excited about getting to more complexity, like having a lot of notes all over the painting. Um, as you saw in that very short video, I've also made simpler ones. So those were using um, conductive paint on just on a regular sheet of paper plugged into a Makey Makey. Um, and in that case, when you play a lot of notes, it's like pressing a lot of keys, because the Makey Makey is pressing keys. For this painting, we decided also to go with MIDI instead of uh, the keyboard. So the Makey Makey, instead of pretending it's a keyboard, can send music data directly to the computer. And that makes it easier to send a whole lot of notes at once. Great, that's that's awesome, and I love that there's so such versatility. And also, I mean, we've been talking about this throughout throughout Maker Camp that prototypes are really it's really important to see where something started and how you can develop from that because people may look at their project and think, oh, but it's just an LED and a battery. But you can take that and take it so far. So thank you so much for sharing the early stages to really inspire campers to take your idea and scale it up, make it big, make it awesome, and keep going with your creations. I want to make even bigger musical paintings. I'm super excited about doing that sometime soon. I would love to see it. So keep us posted on that for sure. And you know, I also now I want to jump over to our our campers over at uh, over with Julie Hooty because I know that one of them has a question for you. Okay. Um, I was wondering, what kind of application do you see for the Makey Makey in the real world? So the question is about applications for the Makey Makey in the real world. Um, awesome, very interesting question. So, I mean. Except for the Makey Makey in my dreams, all of the Makey Makey applications are actually in the, the real world. But I think you mean more like something for um, like, a, like a more practical application or for business or something like that. And there are definitely a bunch of those out there in the world. I was just recently in um, Japan where I met with some people from a company that did an advertising promotion 
um, where they had people come to a little photo booth, and they used Make Make to make it so that when people like touched fingers, then it would take the photo right at that moment, and then they could print the little stickers with the photos and hearts and stuff. It was super cute, and so people in um, advertising and marketing are using the Make Make to do promotions. There's another really cool one where um, they made a game. This company that was selling chocolate in a mall for people and on Valentine's Day, and then you had to kiss kiss each other at the right time. Um, and so there, there have been a few of those. I think another really important real-world application is um, assistive technologies. Um, so technologies that help people who have limited mobility uh, so that they can customize controllers adapted to their specific needs. Accessibility is a really big thing. So some people don't have the hands or fingers to touch a keyboard. Um, so they can touch a piece of tin foil. And so that's kind of cool. It opens up computers to people that might not be able to use them. That's, that's such a great application. And we saw a little bit of that with our camper, uh, camper previews. But yeah, there's, there's just what I'm learning today is that there's just an endless amount of things that you can do with the Makey Makey. And it's a great way to get started on working with, with uh, sensing and interaction and music. So thank you so so much, everybody, for sharing these wonderful ideas with us. And please, all of you, stay with us because we're going to have some camper questions for all of you right after this. Thank you for joining us on Makey Makey Day. I'm Camp Director Paloma, and I want to get to your questions about the Makey Makey right now. So let's jump over to our counselors and hear some of those live. OK. Um, yeah. Well, uh, so uh, the first question is uh, from uh, Chris, uh, who wants to know uh, how can a band uh, perform or record with the uh, Makey Makey? Great question. So That's an Eric, awesome question. Yeah, Eric Abo, who, who wants to take that one? <laughs> I actually gave a concert at Stanford with the banana piano. Um, so one way that I did it was I hooked up MIDI notes. I hooked up the banana piano um, to MIDI notes, and then I had a clarinet performing with me, too. So um, like you could have bananas be one instrument, and then maybe mushrooms be another instrument. And um, you can really create a whole orchestra depending on which sounds you hooked up to it. Um, and you can just be creative. Um, I think one really cool meta thing behind this is that Eric and I are both just lifelong musicians. I think Eric plays trombone in a band. I've been right. Martin. Yeah, I have a degree in percussion, and it's like regardless of Makey Makey, we're just following our passion by studying music, and then Makey Makey allows us to express ourselves musically through Makey Makey. Yeah, totally. I also have been going around doing some live performances with Makey Makey. Uh, I've done a couple of human synthesizer performances, one in collaboration with Jay, where we, we brought eight volunteers on stage and used them to play a version of uh, the song Billie Jean by Michael Jackson. That was a lot of fun. Um, I recently did another similar one in, in Tokyo also, and we arranged the 2001 theme for the human synthesizer. Ba, 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 da, da. I, anyway, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> um, but I've seen uh, videos from at least three different like professional rock bands out there using Makey Makey live on stage. One with uh, audience members with bald heads that they play as percussion. Another one had a piano made of doll heads. Uh, and then another one was a beautiful music video where they took an old Atari console, an old game console, and added little Makey Makey buttons to it and used it to play the main riff, the main melody for the song on the Atari. Those are really awesome applications. And then I think there was a second part of that question that I'm kind of curious about. Can you use the Makey Makey, can you somehow code that up to also record what you're doing? Well, interesting. Do you want to take it, Bo? Oh, well, I would um, treat the Makey Makey just as a regular instrument and throw a microphone in the room. So I would treat the Makey Makey like a synthesizer, with a speaker, or like a guitar with an amp. I would plug your Makey Makey into an amp and then just record that. That's a great idea. I think that that would work really well. Totally. I've actually used it to record like the, the mechanics of the recording, like pressing the space button and pressing the space bar, pressing other keys to record or to loop, 
I often use it that way, actually, because I can't stretch a keyboard all the way over to my piano, but I can, I can put some wires across the room. It's much easier. So I can map just for, especially with Ableton Live, that, that program is particularly easy to map keys. So I, I often use it for recording my own self playing piano or singing or looping. I use Ableton as well. It uh, works great with Makey Makey, totally. Yeah, Ableton, I mean, I've, I've never used it. Uh, I'm not exactly the most musically inclined. I am pretty all right at a clarinet. Uh, but I've, I've heard so many good things about Ableton and how easy it is to use to both customize. Like, you can use, you can use it for normal, you know, like for, for uh, conventional instruments. But you can also use it with your own DIY hack together instruments in really great ways. So if, sure. you're, if you're a camper and you're looking to get into all this, I would definitely check out Ableton and, and research that, that as a program. And there's a really cool tutorial of uh, an Ableton Makey Makey dance floor that you can find on our website. And there's a guy that did a video of how he set it all up so you could follow along. Awesome. While we're talking about software, it's worth mentioning uh, one of the most powerful and flexible ways to use um, Makey Makey to make sound with a computer, which is to use Scratch. So probably uh, some of you campers out there are familiar with it. Um, I've actually used it a lot with Makey Makey, including when I give live performances, uh, one of the versions of the Billie Jean thing uses a scratch project that's set up so that each time you press the space key, it plays the next note in the bass line, like bum, 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 you know, the, the Billie Jean bass line. Um, and so Scratch is really um, convenient for making sounds with Makey Makey because you can just say, like, when the space key is pressed, play a sound. It's a simple little program that gets you everything. Yeah, I've, I've heard really great of... stuff about Scratch. I, I, I've also had a to bring it back to Sketch It, Play It. I've had a lot of fun combining the recording of people's voices with the drawing of pictures, and that's a very fun thing to do where you can map some one thing that they've drawn to, to them saying that word so that every time they then touch that it's their own voice saying that word so that's a that's a kind of a combination of sketch it draw it and recording I love it that's that's beautiful there's I mean I, I love that this is so versatile I mean you can just take it in any direction that you want I can't imagine that a camper would ever get bored having a makey makey you could just continually try new stuff and create interesting things and it's it's not even just for music. It's for all of these cool button mapping you can play. Like we saw in the beginning, we saw a maker playing a game using the Makey Makey and interfacing it. I mean, there's just so many cool things that you can do, especially with Scratch, which is one of my favorite ways to encourage campers to get interested and started with programming because it's like drag and drop object-oriented programming. So I love that. I love Scratch and all of that. It, it, it works out so well. It's it's, thank you for making this platform that's so easy to use and a great introduction for campers. And we're always learning from Makey Makey projects. So actually, I hooked it up to my guitar, and I noticed that two guitar strings were touching each other um, behind the scenes. And so anyway, anytime someone makes a new Makey Makey project, oh, there's a dog piano. Oh, you have to touch the dog on a certain part of his body, or else it's not conductive. So in some spots, it's furry, but on his nose, it works, and so it's really kind of like a tool to teach you about the world and to, you know how electricity is running through different things in the world. Every time I see a new project, I learn, mm -hmm. which kind of is a testament to the fact that it's a it's a tool for people to be creative. So people often ask us, "What can you do with this?" And the real question is, "Can you please show me something new that you're doing with this?" Because I'm hoping that people will continue to take it to the next level to show me what they can do. That's a beautiful way to put it, Bo. Um, yeah, it really is. want to show people that the world is their construction kit, that they can transform the everyday things around them into something new that no one imagined before, but that they could create. Yeah, it's it's such a great way to completely change your environment and look at everything in a new way. And actually, I, I kind of want to check in with Rachel and, and see what's your connection with Makey Makey and how is it being completely surrounded by conductive plants? <laughs> yeah, this is our uh, Joy Labs west location and we actually do have a, a 10 12 foot ficus tree that we often like to hook up to um, to make a make and surprise people when they walk into the into our lab here and um, are shocked by a giant tree playing music 
Um, and I, my official title with Makey Makey is uh, Logistics Goddess. So I make, I make things happen behind the scene, making sure that everyone in the world is uh, able to get their Makey Makey. You got a Makey Makey in your hand. Rachel helped get it. Yeah. Thanks, Rachel. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Logistics Goddess. <laughs> Man, I want a title like that. I'm going I'm to tell the people in charge somewhere around here. Give me it's a goddess a DIY title. title. <laughs> just uh, just make, your, make your own up. <laughs> I love it. I'll have to get on that. I'll think about it. The painting just woke up. I just want to play it for a second for you. Yeah, go for it. Beautiful. I love it. It's so cool. And it's it's really beautiful, but it's it, it, like just visually and with the sounds, it's it's a fantastic project. I love that. Thanks. I want to make more of them. Yeah, please do. And then post them on the community page. And I want to see <laughs> musical paintings that other people make, too. Yeah, that would be awesome. Campers, get on it. And speaking of campers, let's take one more question. So we've got a question from Skylar who wants to know if you can hook up a Makey Makey to a pressure sensor and play Dance Dance Revolution on it. Whoa. Um, do you want to take it both? Oh, sure, yeah. So um, you can play Dance Dance Revolution with it. Um, I think there's a game online. What I might do instead of a pressure sensor is I would use the Makey Makey to press keys on the keyboard. But I think there's an online game that you have Dance Dance Revolution and you're pushing left, up, right, left, and down. And so um, you could have um, tin foil pads. Or water buckets, like we show on our Kickstarter video. Yeah. Or water buckets, yeah. yeah. Or mm -hmm. um, little pads of grass. Um, you could do a Dance Dance Revolution out in your own backyard. I think it's important to know one thing that Makey Makey is great at is pressing keyboard keys. But if people want to use sensors, like pressure sensors, they should definitely do that. But you know, they should probably use an Arduino or something like that, um, because Makey Makey is great for keyboard presses mostly. Um, and people often say, "Can I use this sensor or that sensor?" And you can, but I might recommend using an Arduino for that. Makey Makey can be a great starting point because uh, it's a way to start simple, and then you can grow in complexity. And maybe that means moving to something else. But yeah, because Makey Makey is usually binary, so it's either on or off. That's right. Sensors, sensors usually have a whole range of things, so it kind of it, you you lose some of the the fluidity with a, pr a pressure sensor. But with Makey Makey, you get that great entry point, and I think that that's a really really important thing. And we've talked about this a lot on the show that if you put uh, if you put limits on yourself, you know you don't you don't give yourself a bajillion option. You give yourself on or off. You can end up creating so many amazing things with those limits on that you know you confine yourself by setting a few variables, and then you see what you can create with those with those restrictions, and you can come up with so as we've seen today, so many beautiful, amazing things. So thank you so much for sharing all of these amazing things and, and teaching us that really campers, you can you can start with something very simple and take it all the way up to amazingly awesome recording gloves that play music and bend sound. So thank you everyone for being here today and I want to jump over to the counselors so that we can learn a little bit more about the project we've been talking about the whole time. Sketch it, play it. Right, so as you just said, the daily project is a sketch it, play it. Uh, a couple of things to note when putting this together is to make sure your line is wide enough um, so that the current can be carried through this line that you're drawing. Um, make sure you're drawing it in graphite, which is any pencil lead or just any pencil. Um, and to make sure that the lines that you draw are close enough to the edge of the paper so that you can hook up the alligator clip to the paper. Those are some great tips. And you can check out the Google Plus community page for more information on a step-by-step -step on that project. And please post your pictures and videos of that in action, because I want to see it. And you know what, thank you so much everyone for being here today. You've all been so fantastic. Thank you to Eric and Bo and Rachel and Kelly and to the Hootie Maker Campers, the Makey Makey Makers and the Purple Paper Reader pr Producers. <laughs> That's hard to say. But we've been, had so much fun to see to spend time with all of you and this has been just an awesome day. So thank you so much and join us tomorrow when we meet with Architect. We're going to meet the man behind the Faraday suit, Joe DePrima. So thank you so much, everyone. I just This is awesome. And campers, if you were inspired by anything you saw on the show today, remember, do try this at home.
Goodbye, campers.